Welcome to the Nutrigenomic Nation podcast with Brian Highfield, certified nutritionist, author, speaker, and founder of multiple successful companies in the health world. Brian is known for educating healthcare professionals and others on improving their health and their life through breakthroughs in nutrition, technology, and biochemistry. On the podcast, Brian interviews thought leaders in the world of nutrition and natural health. He and his guests share the secrets of a whole life natural approach to health and the life-altering results you can get by making easy changes to your diet and daily routine. Well, welcome to another episode of Nutrigenomic Nation, where we talk about topics related to your good health. So today we got a special guest. We have Dr. Brandy Moore. Dr. Brandy is a mom, a wife, a naturopathic doctor, mentor, speaker, and the host of the Pretty Healthy Podcast. So welcome, Dr. Brandy. Hi, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Now, our audience wants to get to know you a little bit. So can you tell us a little bit about your background? I mean, what made you want to become a naturopathic doctor? Yeah, so I um, always wanted to be a doctor. I was one of those kids who felt like they knew what they wanted to do by the age of five. But as I got a little bit older, I felt like the traditional medical model was just missing something that was missing a piece of the puzzle. And so I went a completely different direction, started looking at things like fashion buying, um, got a degree in PR and just decided that I was going to switch lanes entirely. Tried that for a little while, but it didn't really fit. I felt like I wasn't really helping anyone, which for me was very important Um, So went back to the drawing board, looked at everything. What did I like? I like science. How can I use that to help people? And thought I was going to be a registered dietitian, decided to take that path. And one day I was watching YouTube, which is so silly, but I was watching YouTube and this is when the raw food movement was huge. Mm -hmm. And it was huge on like Freely the Banana Girl, like all of that was very much in the awareness on that platform. And I heard someone say they were going to see their naturopathic doctor. And I was like, what kind of doctor would like be balancing your diet, like your raw food diet, along with doing blood work? Like, and I looked it up, read about it and said, that's it. That's what I want to do. Walked into the room. My mom was very concerned because obviously most people (laughs) haven't heard of a naturopathic doctor. Um, so she was just, concerned, like, do naturopathic doctors actually make any money? <laughs> that was actually the first thing that she said. She was like, mm, I think no. And I was like, no, it's, it's everything. It's like the mixture of, you know, uh, traditional philosophy and nutrition and conventional medicine and like using the wisdom from all and not saying that one is superior over the other. I think it's the best way to go. And so, um, I would say within like a couple of months, I had applied to naturopathic school and at, once I like made up my mind, there was really no coming back. Wow. Yeah. So that's, that's a, that's a great story. And, and I, I love the fact that you, you want to help people. And a lot of people in this profession uh, have uh, just this passion about helping people. And, and I felt a similar way because I was an engineer by trade working and I'm like, I, how am I helping people? I mean, and, and, it's, and it's awesome and it's refreshing to hear that there's people like you out there that, uh, that are in this to help other people. Now, you talk about the foundations of health uh, on your website and, and you talk about sleep, stress, movement, hormones. Can you, let's, let's talk through uh, some of these um, foundations of health and, and really why are they important for your overall well-being? A lot of focus is always put on the external I find in today's medical society. It's like, whether it be that bug or what what, um, externally is happening to you and not a lot of focus is on you and your personal responsibility for your own health. And when it comes to what you put in your mouth, as you know, it matters so much. So nutrition is one of those core principles that if your nutrition is off, your health will be off, right? Um, If you're eating the wrong foods, then they're going to reflect negatively the body can adjust and can kind of um, can kind of balance until it can't anymore is what I always say. Cause you'll get the pushback of like, my grandpa ate McDonald's and drank a fifth of vodka every day. And it's like, well, he held until he couldn't. And not everyone's ability to hold their health in that situation is the same. So he might've been able to do it for 40 years. You might only be able to do it for three until you see negative effects. Um, there's no way to tell you that, but Sleep is key, um, right? That's the time our body regenerates and restores itself. 
And so if you're not having a restful sleep, there's a lot of, whether it be injury or um, damage due to diet, damage due to stress, that your body is not going to have the opportunity to fix and to mend like it's meant to. Um, but you need good nutrition to give it the nutrients that it needs in order to perform those processes, which I feel like is something that people don't also speak on is like, yes, B12 gives you energy, but you actually need certain cofactors to be able to perform certain um, things in the body, whether that be creating energy, whether that be digesting food, whether that be absorbing nutrients, like you need certain things. And that's why diet is one of those foundations along with everything else and stress. I mean, yeah, stress is a big one, right? I mean, uh, you know, we, we all have different stresses in life, but how does stress play that play that much of a role in our health? Stress, um, there's, we often think of, or I, I guess how I like to explain it is that we think of stress and differently than what our body thinks of stress. So our bodies are naturally meant to do acute bursts of stress, right? I see a bear, I instantly have that fight or flight feeling, that rush of all the adrenaline and hormones, run from that bear, now I'm safe, calm down. What we're doing in modern society is we're taking that same stress response, but we're making it chronic. So instead of seeing that bear running and then like getting out of that stress response, the cortisol lowering and the adrenals kind of going back to baseline, we're living in a chronic stress environment. So our adrenals are always kind of in that fight or flight fear mode, and it can play an issue with depleting your other hormones. It can cause weight gain. It can cause hair loss. Um, and a lot of people will come to me with those issues. And then when I ask about their stress, it's like, oh, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I mean, like work is a little, I mean, I don't know, but like, and it's like, okay, well, you just explained to me that like work is stressing you, home life is stressing you. You're basically that meme of the dog that's sitting in the burning building and they're like, it's okay. <laughs> but, um, but then you they're tell me, denial, right? <laughs> and they're like, oh, my stress is like a three. I'm like, all of the things you just described and it's a three, probably not. So what will happen is the adrenals, again, will compensate until they can't anymore. And then they're kind of like, hey, buddy, you're on your own. And what happens is they, you still have a great need for cortisol, but they're not producing as much. So your body will convert progesterone to cortisol. So you'll start to get a lot of female hormone imbalances like irregular cycles um, or acne, weight gain, bloating, but really it's the stress that's the main root cause of all of the other symptoms. Wow. Let's, let's talk a little bit about hormones. I mean, you, you, um, you counsel a lot of people uh, around their hormone health, men and women. Um, talk about the importance of, of hormones and, and how that plays a role in our well-being. So when I feel like hormones is almost a generic term, I don't think people really understand when the word hormones is used. So adrenal glands, which sit on top of the kidneys, produce hormones for us, um, including the sex steroid hormones. In women, the ovaries produce, right? The testes produce those sex hormones as well. And then you have the thyroid, which also produces hormones. So there's many glands that are all producing hormones and they all work to balance how your body works whether that be your metabolism, whether that be your energy production, whether that be your hot and cold intolerance. If we look at things like the thyroid, um, it can be how much reserve you have for things like stress. If we're talking about the adrenals, if we go to the, the sex hormones. We're looking at libido. Um, for men, if they have low testosterone, it often looks like, I just don't feel like myself is how a man will describe it. Women are very chatty. <laughs> so they'll tell you, I've got hot flashes and mood changes. And, and my husband says, I mean, like they'll go into it. <laughs> Men are often like, I just don't feel like myself anymore. Like I used to, I used to be sharp. I used to be on. My memory used to be quick. And now I just feel like a muted version of myself, whether that be emotional, whether that be in the gym, I'm working out, I'm not seeing the same gains or I'm stalling. And before I could tweak my diet, add an extra day at the gym and everything looked good. Um, so men often will only think of testosterone and libido. So oftentimes they come in cause they're like, Hey, something's off with my libido. Like let's fix it. But when I start talking to them, they realize, well, yeah, I guess I just thought I was getting older. Like, yeah, I have that little belly fat, but I thought I was just getting older or again with the memory or the like muted feeling. They're like, I just, I thought that was age. And it's like, no, well, I mean, yes, but it's your testosterone. So. I like to start with testing just to make sure. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Like, where do you start with folks with, with that coming in and telling you these are these issues? 
So um, testing is the first thing. There are some doctors who will kind of treat empirically. Um, I don't. And the reason why I say that is, for instance, um, acne is a great example. If you see a dermatologist, oftentimes they'll prescribe a drug called spironolactone, which decreases testosterone. But they do that without testing testosterone. So I never like to adjust the hormone levels until I know exactly what they're doing. So we do a um, free 15 minute consultation. We kind of talk about everything that you have going on in that conversation. It's kind of parsed out, right? If it's adrenals, if it's thyroid, if you haven't had your yearly labs, I'll add those in as well to get a full picture of what's going on. Then we do the labs and then the initial appointment. And at that appointment, we go over the labs and start with treatment. But I always start with labs just to make sure that what I'm suspecting is actually the cause because if not, you can actually cause more issues down the line. So, um, you know, I mean, you, you do a lot of nutritional counseling as, as well. And, and so what are some of the commonalities you're seeing with a lot of people that are seeking help as far as what, what they eat? So 2019 versus 2020 was a lot different. Mm -hmm. So in this last year, there's a lot of stress eating. So even people who had overcome some uh, nutritional struggles before, whether that just be eating that standard American diet or drinking alcohol, that's a huge one. Um, all of that changed in 2020. People kind of like, a lot of people, not all, took that progress that they had made and really um, went back to some of those comforting bad habits, whether that be finding comfort in that glass of wine at the end of the day to relieve their stress or in that piece of cake or, or whole cake. Um, so a lot of it is adjusting those, um, habits. There's a lot of emotional eating right now. Um, there's a lot of relying on things like carbohydrates, um, for that pleasure, getting that like little serotonin hit every time they have something sweet or something naughty, I'll say like a, a bad food. Um, so I'm doing a lot of kind of basic nutritional counseling, but I also take a slightly different approach. Um, there's a lot of diets out there, as you know, diet, like paleo, keto, vegan, mm -hmm. vegetarian. And I find people often don't know where to start or if they're supposed to be doing one of those because is vegan the pinnacle of health? Is paleo the pinnacle of health? And I take a more holistic approach and a baby step approach because the idea is a lifestyle, not just that you hop on another diet, you're going to quit in three months. So start easing in with water, start decreasing the coffee as we decrease the stress, get them sleeping better, and then also start increasing things like vegetables. So it'll, I'll just, you know, are you eating any vegetables? No? All right. Can we just eat two servings a day? <laughs> let's do that for two weeks. Like, let's just get something green yeah, in there. baby steps. Because if not, then it's, it's, the extreme is on both ends. And then when they stop, they're going to pick up those same bad habits. I want them to know how good it feels when they actually give their body the fuel it needs. Now, do you have any type of testing for deficiencies or anything as far as their diet goes? Mm, not at the moment. Um, I know there are quite a few tests out there where you can test outside of like vitamin D, B12, nothing really, and iron, um, nothing outside of that. Oftentimes you can really tell from their diet. And if they're eating that standard American diet, I will recommend something like a multivitamin or a multimineral um, to say, okay, you're eating McDonald's three times a day mm -hmm. and you're eating at the Circle K. Like for sure, <laughs> I don't know that I need a test to tell me you're not getting enough nutrients. Um, and so then I will just add in kind of what I think they need while we get their diet on board to have them getting it from their food. But if they're vegan or vegetarian, then there's obviously like iron, vitamin D and B12 are kind of par for the course. Yeah, absolutely. So um, one of my favorite questions to ask guests is, uh, let's say that you're in a stadium full of people interested in improving their health and you're handed the microphone and you have their attention and they wanna know from Dr. Brandy, you know, what can they do? What's gonna make the most impact on their lives as far as improving their health? And what, what would you say to that crowd? If there's one thing, mm -hmm. one thing, um, it would be their diet. It would be to make changes there. Because as I mentioned, to, to perform certain processes in the body, we need certain nutrients. Um, it wouldn't be to take a multivitamin for the rest of their life because you could be on a thousand supplements, but if your diet is awful and your digestion is awful, you're not actually absorbing those. Um, so it would definitely be 
to adopt a more well-balanced, nutritionally dense diet. Awesome. Good advice. So how can our audience find out more about you, get in touch with you, um, follow you? So what, what are some places they can go to connect with, with Dr. Brandy? Yeah. Um, so I do have an emailing list they could find on um, my website, which is drbrandymore.com. Um, I'm also on Instagram and TikTok at Dr. Brandy Moore. Um, I do quite a bit on those two platforms. I'm also on Facebook, but I'm not very active. So I would say if you want to actively follow some of the content I create, it would be TikTok and Instagram. And then I also have my podcast, which launched last week called The Pretty Healthy Podcast. And that is on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and wherever else you get your podcasts. Awesome. Good stuff. So our guest today has been Dr. Brandy Moore, naturopathic doctor out of Scottsdale, Arizona, when we've been talking about the importance of sleep, managing your stress, hormone health, and different nutritional uh, needs and, and techniques there. So uh, we hope you enjoyed this episode of Nutrigenomic Nation. We hope you join us next time where we talk to you about another topic related to your genetic health. So thank you so much, Dr. Brandy Moore, for being with us today. Thank you for having me. This show has been produced by Market Domination, LLC. To discover how you can have your own show completely done for you and turn it into a real published book and become the authority in your marketplace, go to www.marketdominationllc.com slash podcast offer.